Sprite Castle. Sprite Castle. Sprite Castle. Put your robo hair. Sprite Castle. Hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, another episode of Sprite Castle. Uh, it looks like, unfortunately for me, my um, chat window is broken. Uh, uh, no! <laughs> Hello, it worked, it worked. Hooray, hooray. Um, I did something. Uh, actually, while I'm talking, let's do this. All right, let's check our levels. We've got mic levels. Let's see who is getting blown up by the tornado at the moment. Kind of falling apart, David. And uh, but man, what a what a multiple vortices, just large tornado here, David. And if this falls apart, David, I might go back to the west here. I can see clearly see Seminole now, and I may go back to the west and try to go through here and pick up some damage. If that's all right with you, Jim Gardner, you've got it. Go do it and bus west. Absolutely, get back on it. You're you're just all you're, right. I'm gonna turn you're, this you're one minute down away. in the feed here Absolutely. a little bit. This is uh, ground, so go ahead and then if broadcasting ready, live. To go <clears> to, uh, Seminole, Jim Hello, go Buck ahead, Owens. Having lunch okay, so at work. Leftover pizza, Link's man. Three. There ain't nothing wrong and, uh, uh, with leftover we pizza. And we have I am a. Uh, are you a uh, uh, a microwave? Do you reheat leftover pizza? Goodness. Or are you a, uh, we're right on the boundary uh, between bad things are, are you just a, uh, you eat it at room temperature. Okay. I'm a room temperature right guy. Boundary. Doesn't this bother me at all. Right. I don't, uh, right right I don't now. mind right it. Now. This storm uh, came in a little more stable air moving into the metro. It I didn't am like something that it was being fed and it said, nope. currently and it looking for, it did not go, which is great news. This, that uh, if, if you've never been through this before, by the way, I'm, Stalling a little bit for time because I'm tracking down uh, a couple of the uh, uh, new games that have just been released. These show. I'm looking. Th See how excited he is, but he's. If you're listening to the words, he's saying, "There's no risk of a tornado." That's. <laughs> and they 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 take over. Uh, oh no. This is, uh, I'm looking for, one of the things I'm looking for right now, as we chat, is the new Pac-Man ROM. <clears throat> so I am trekking down the new Pac-Man ROM. I have the new Star Wars uh, game for the Commodore 64. Okay, let's go see here. So, uh... <clears throat> Um, Drezu says, uh, love the last rando Rob. I met three out of the five people you did when they were alive. Oh yeah. So on the last rando Rob, uh, for my uh, Patreon people, uh, I showed off some of the autographed, uh, Star Wars action figures that I had as a little early May the 4th. Uh, which is what we're doing here. We're doing some fun May the 4th. Okay, here is number two out of three. We're going to go get the new. Oh, boy. Big power line. Power line's good. Uh, uh, that's good TV, the power line. Anyway, so so what's going on here? Now, there is actually a tornado, but it's very far away from me. It's not, not really near me. Um, but, uh, so now you got to get your, you got to get your helicopters out there. It's all about ratings, right? Which, um, I hate to say it that way, but it kind of is. So now they've, every channel has their own, uh, as this guy's saying right now, he's like, oh, they got a house. Got a house. Wah, wah. Not good for that guy. 
All right. Well, that's uh, good. Uh, that covers the uh, current tornado footage for the moment. So I've got it. I have it open here on the uh, second monitor. Buck is a reheater. Uh, now, uh, Buck also happen, uh, asked if I have a basement. So I've talked about this um, on uh, maybe on the tornado episode, maybe the one that I talked about it. But um, basic, uh, the general rule in Oklahoma is that Oklahoma does not have basements uh, because of the way that the ground uh, is constructed. Well, not, not constructed, the way that the ground is. We have a very... Uh, low water table and a very high clay content, uh, which makes it difficult to build, um, basements here. So if you build a basement in Oklahoma, you have to, uh, basically dig it all out as one piece. You have to dig it out as one hole and then pour it as one solid piece of concrete because, what happens is under normal construction, if you were to, uh, you know, put the foundation down and then put the walls up and stuff like they normally would do when building a basement, which would be um, much less expensive, is uh, then when the, uh, <clears throat> in the summer and the winter, when it heats up because the clay is so hard, it would just smash the walls in. So they, uh, they can't do it. So I... I believe in my lifetime in Oklahoma, I have been in three houses that had basements. One was a guy I went to high school with. He had a basement. And the other two were both houses that were for sale. And uh, I immediately, when I saw the ads and it said basement, I went and immediately went to go look at uh, the houses because I had never seen uh, houses around here with basements. So... Um, uh, yeah, it was, um, uh, it's, it's pretty, pretty unusual here. Now, um, attics are very commonplace and I've talked to friends that, uh, um, I've never seen attics like we have. And also because of that, for that same reason, uh, the way that the ground is that all houses here essentially are built on concrete foundations, uh, so it's kind of rare. I think there, you know, maybe some older homes and stuff, but it's pretty rare to find a house that has like, um, a crawl space or something, you know, a way to get under the house. Like all houses here sit on concrete. Hold on. We're going live. <clears throat> Let's see if we can bring this in a little bit. Chopper four or no, this is chopper nine. This is news nine. Now this guy. Uh, you have to know all the different guys, um, but this guy, um, Mike Morgan, uh, no, and this isn't uh, Mike Morgan, it's David Payne. David Payne has special ties. When he wears a red tie, you know uh, stuff's about to get serious, and he's got on his red tie today, so you know it's uh, pretty serious. Um, but they each have their own little shtick, each of the uh, major news, local news channels, and um uh, channel nine, this is the CBS station. Uh, they have a lot of technology. They have a, a, a lot of money invested in, in predicting tornadoes and following tornadoes and tracking tornadoes and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, the good news is, I mean, uh, if you're at home, like you shouldn't be surprised by a tornado, like, you know, so here we go. So he's like showing this map here and you can see like, they are showing, you know, towns in Oklahoma. Like I said, those towns are so far away, I don't even recognize them. There's Wawoka. I've never been to any anywhere on this map <laughs> in Oklahoma. Um, but uh, they will draw lines and they'll say, hey, you know, it's... Um, oh, first of all, look on the left-hand side. You got Seminole, Le Lexington, and Wawoka, if you could see those. So they have people in their storm trucks that are have cameras on their car. So they're driving around... Uh, where the storms are, uh, actually the one at the Seminole up there at the top is a helicopter shot, but, uh, Lexington and Wawoka, you could see those are like cameras on guys' cars. And so they're, they're driving around where the storms either are or were, usually it's where they, they are coming and, uh, they will, they'll, they actually have a, a radar thing where they will, uh, they'll draw a line. Uh, so by the way, tornadoes, 
I mean, I know people know what tornadoes are. I'm sure everybody's seen Wizard of Oz. But tornadoes are caused by uh, cold air coming in and over hot air. So that's why Oklahoma, uh, it's in a part of the country where the jet stream comes down and the heat from uh, the south comes up. And when uh, the conditions are just right, it causes uh, tornadoes. So... Uh, so that's why they show the colors and stuff on that map is you can see the different colors of, uh, the, you know, temperatures of the air and the different heights of air and stuff. And so they'll show rotations of the storm. Uh, but, um, you learn, uh, you learn a lot about tornadoes when you live in tornado alley, <laughs> it turns out. Um, but anyway, what they will do is as they're watching the storms, uh, when the storms begin, they will draw, I mean, it'll have a map and they'll draw a line and they'll say, you know, based on the wind, this is where it's going and it'll show what time it's going to hit, uh, each, uh, each place. Of course, down at the bottom, you can see like which counties they're saying, um, oh, see Canadian County down there. That's where I live. <laughs> um, but uh, the other thing, uh, you know, basic okay so look at the thing on the left now um you can see it's just slightly off um but it says like okay okima i do know where okima is alt mulgi down there but see how it shows the times like 8 24 8 29 9 30 so they know if you can see this uh i don't think i have my pointer oh yeah yeah uh but uh so they're like, this is where the storm is, you know, and then there's kind of like this, uh, where it, where it angles outwards like that. And, and so they say, you know, so it could go up, it could go down, but basically it's going this way. And so based off that, you know, they pull up all these towns that are in the path. And then that's what you've got over here is it says, you know, this time, this time, this time, this time, this time. And so, um, and then what you've got here, like this right here. This spot right here that I'm pointing to, this is a problem. Now, I'm sure he's pointing to it, too. I'm not listening to him. But see how this, you've got this inlet here, and you've got cold air, and you've got hot air, and it's coming around like this. So this is starting to, to um, circulate. So circulation's bad. We all know this uh, in tornado land. Circulation is bad. And so this is, uh, uh, that's, that's probably uh, what he's all worked up about and watching. Now, a lot of times, but anyway, this guy's shtick is that their channel is better than all the other channels. And so, um, Hmm. Well, that took longer than I thought. Um, so, uh, that, that's his whole thing is he'll, he'll say like, you know, the other channels, their radar data is out that out, uh, outdated. You got to get the current data. Uh, if you want to, uh, I don't know what this is this little thing is what is this oh i know what that is you know what this is <laughs> this is a uh, input that i've left on here but let's make this uh this is uh, my vcr <laughs> i don't know why it's no i don't want to delete it it's not really a mister it's really a capture card all right but we don't need that. We need this. Oh my gosh. What a crazy introduction. Let's go take a look here. I hope um, everybody is having a wonderful May the 4th. May the 4th be with you all. It sounds like a, you have a lisp when you say that. May the 4th be with you. Let's take a look. Now this game, uh, Empire Strikes Back by Mega Style. I've not played this yet. This was released this morning, and uh, this has been being um, uh, advertised for, gosh, a year. I think I mentioned this. Uh, uh, I think I mentioned this a year ago on the podcast. They were they were teasing this. And I was really hoping that, uh, uh, uh oh, hang on. Oh, well, we missed it. We got tor tornado touchdown. <laughs> That's bad news. <laughs> not, not if you live here though. Uh, it's really far away. Let's try to get to the live uh, footage or whatever. But, um, uh, you know, May, May the 4th is, um, Oh, 
Beleza. It was a dirt once, but uh, that's not bad. Oh, that's cute. It's the Mega Style logo. And I have another. There we go. I had a remnant of that other input. Great music. They put a lot of work, you know. So, uh, from what I understand, what I was reading today on Twitter uh, is that there was a cartridge release for this plan, and uh, apparently the, the plans fell through. I don't know why. I can only assume it's because of uh, copyright issues. Normally, and, and this isn't always true, I mean, I, you guys know this, normally if you make something and give it away for free, you can kind of sneak under the radar, but there's two companies that don't allow that. One is Lucasfilm, and the other is Nintendo. Uh, uh, how big is this file? I don't, it wasn't very big. Uh, it, it fits on one one floppy, so the file I downloaded is 170k. They put a lot of work into the sound. Uh, I'm assuming that these are all new um, uh, sound, I mean, uh, uh, music files. So if you've never played uh, Empire Strikes Back for the Atari 2600, this is a updated port of, uh, or an updated version of that game for the Commodore 64. Now, I have not... Um, Outs from the West, stage one. Okay, so there's us. We're Luke and our snow speeder. Looks like we do a pretty good uranium U turn, <laughs> is what I'd call it. We can shoot. We should have a radar. Oh! I would say, uh, the only complaint I have so far is that in the, uh, that your ship kind of gets lost in the, uh, the color of the mountains there. Oh, you can auto fire. Well, that makes things more simple. All right, we shut that guy. You can see in the upper right hand uh, thing, we've got. Uh, oh, I didn't dodge that very well. There's, we've got our, uh, our energy at the very top. I guess what would make more sense is to learn where in the horizon I need to be, which appears to be right above the blue there.
Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. So I might, can't tell if I'm damaging my ship by running into the ground here or not. Let's see. No. Alright, so that's pretty good. The uh, thing I would say about the Atari 2600 version. Stage cleared, alright. Well, no, they're shooting backwards, too. <laughs> and I think these uh, AT-ATs that we're going to hit are going to be uh, much more difficult. Yeah, this is, um, there's a lot of details. Um, I do believe that, uh, you know, just from this few screens. Oh, shot your mama. Oh, boy. Let's see. Whoa. So there's, there's a lot of this. <laughs> I mean, this is pretty much the game. If you played it on the Atari 2600, it's shooting at people. It's moving up and down to avoid laser Now they will have if you uh, go too slow. I'm trying to check out the radar down there. I like how the radar almost looks like a, a sound file or something. Like we could see where they're at. You can hear how fast I'm going when I'm going slow, and then when I speed up, listen. So you can tell how fast you're going based on the sound. Alright, let's see if I can draw fire. Took one too many. <laughs> yeah, they, they shoot forward and backwards. And in uh, the Atari game, which I can only imagine that will also be in this version, are uh, smart bombs as well. Now, in the Atari game, there was a uh, also occasionally a one little spot that would light up on them, and you could kill them with a single shot. Is that it? Oh, that guy's down. I don't. Hmm, I don't know if that. If I. I don't know if I actually care about this, but I will note that when they uh, die, they just disappear. They don't. Uh, I don't know why. I thought they would just fall down a pile of. Oh, look at that! See that shot that got me? Kind of got it still. I don't know how far you gotta fly away to get away from that missile. Still got me. They're getting close to my shields, though. <laughs> oh no, no! Loop down! Skywalker down! Red 5! Wait, is he, he's not Red 5 in the uh, Empire Strikes Back, too. Yeah. Just like ripping the ears off a Gundar back home, back. Probably should have brushed up on my Empire Strikes Back. Where's What's the deal here? Oh no! My new technique is to shoot him in the butt. Doesn't seem like it's doing much though. That's the problem. Gonna have to. Woo!
This is on the Commodore 64. This was released today by Mega Style. Mega Style is a uh, Commodore 64. I don't know what you call it. Like I, I guess I would say cracking group, but they've done a lot, a lot of things. And uh, I believe it was, uh, I believe six in uh, uh, Mega Style released um, Durmaster, which if you deal with Commodore 64 stuff. Is one of the most important uh, tools you can have. If you've never seen Durmaster, I suppose I could do a demo of it sometime. I think I could probably just dodge a shootout with this guy. Oh, you lost your head. All right, where's this guy? All right. Oh, no. Oh, Luke. So we get a little... Until later, um, of course, I'm playing this on a uh, emulator, but later I'm going to dump this over on my real 64, which I which I have hooked up to uh, much larger speakers. Nice. Sith Stanley. <laughs> So ATST takes 20 shots, and ADAT takes 30 to 50 shots, or one shot to the droid hatch. <clears throat> A mega style game, programmed by Chris Stanley, graphics by Moon Spaz. Roy Whitting. I realize that there are newer tools now than what we had back in the day for creating music and stuff, but. Uh, Music in this is really good. Nope, this is just a plain old stock stock C64 setup. Nothing extra needed. So again, uh, as I, I read a little bit on Twitter today that um uh okay, so we know these guys need 20 shots. Let's try to save a few guys so I can have more ships flying into that third level because what I did see on Twitter is that there's like different backgrounds and stuff too like there's a night attack and some other stuff and I'd like to get to one of those I wonder if anybody has released a cracked or hacked copy of it Took like a third of my. So this was the old Atari technique. Although the Atari version didn't have ATSTs. sound uh, as it uh, relates to my speed. These first missiles are not that hard to uh, dodge. I 
will say that uh, there doesn't, unless I'm missing something. Uh oh, watch out. Oh, Luke. Come on now. Stay away from these smart bombs here. Uh, it's hard to tell how much damage they have left. Hey, Joey's, welcome to the show. Well, um, whatever another podcaster said about me, uh, it's not true, and I apologize <laughs> for whatever they said. Uh, like a DOS is uh, my latest, uh, my latest love. I love all kinds of old games, and I grew up playing all these old games. I grew up with a Commodore sixty four, but the whole time I had a Commodore sixty four, my dad had a PC in the living room. And then, true to life, unfortunately, when I was younger, our house was destroyed by an ad at, which is why I'm taking my anger out on these ad hats. Okay, that didn't actually happen. Could have happened. Watch out, Luke. Come on. I mean, so anybody that's played this on the Atari 2600 knows this game is a little repetitive. But also on the Atari 2600, it didn't look anywhere near this good. You know? Oh boy. Watch out. Don't shoot Dak. Man down. Won't be able to shoot our harpoon if they get Dak. And then where will you be? You'll be spending the night in a Tauntaun's belly. I thought these things smelled bad on the outside. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, after this game, I'm going to show you a Star Wars thing. By the way, uh, I still haven't finished these Star Wars shelves. You know, the wall behind me is uh, Star Wars stuff. Will be eventually the Star Wars stuff. All I have left is 24 more tubs of Star Wars stuff. Thank you, Mac Apple, for the wings. I think, uh... Oh, he's flashing now. Boom! Add at down. Oh, boy. I mean, I'm like right up against my. Oh, <laughs> that worked for a minute. Oh. I assume that little sound means it's not doing anything. When it goes plink, plink. Where are you, my friend? Oh, man. If you could get it right at the end where you just kind of stop like that. And then there's the little sound you heard of the uh, droid hatch opening. Now, if I remember right on the uh, Atari, the droid hatch was right above his head. Joey, do you like gladiator movies? <laughs> okay, now this is the level that goes. Oh boy, watch out! Now. But look at this—I've still got all my men. Now I'm like, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa! Imperial probe droid, let him go by. You know what I have on the shelves back there? Imperial probe droid. Joey says he had a PC Junior growing up, so he only had that for games for the longest time in high school. He got an XT with EGA and an Apple IIc Plus. Well, uh, one of one of the things. First of all, well, I know I had an, a PC Junior. We got a PC Junior in uh, '83 or '84. Like, like uh, we we got the first, you know, with the the uh, chiclet keyboard. That was the first one we had. Uh, my dad was uh, into computers, so I was... Oh, no. Hey, well, look at that. I'm just going to shoot out in your face. In your face, ATST. There should be a third one over here. Uh, so, yeah, I grew up, uh, you know, the earliest days playing CGA and EGA games. And then, of course, even just, you know, 
plain tech stuff. We have a TRS-80 first. And then uh, got rid of that. Got the PC. And then moved to an Apple, which is why right behind me on the uh, retro desk, I have a uh, Apple IIe hooked up. Oh, and there's another probe droid. I take it the you know, probe droid is the... Uh, You've been hanging around on this level too long. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. So I definitely love... Uh, I like all, all that stuff. I like the Apple. Uh, I have, a, I think, a whole podcast about... Uh, actually, I did an episode of You Don't Know Flack about the Apple too, and I talked about all the time I spent uh, as a kid playing uh, Runner and, and Wizardry. Wizardry was... Hey, I saw it at uh, uh, Kansas Fest this year, Apple II Kansas Fest. Uh, the lead speaker is going to be uh, Bob Whitehead, a.k.a. Robert Whitehead, which if you played Wizardry, you know the uh, evil Trebor. Trebor is Robert Backwards. He was one of the two uh, designers and developers of the original Wizardry. So... I would like to go, I'm going to say this, say this on the record, I would like to go to Kansas Fest, but here's the thing, what am I known for? Commodore Podcast, so I mean, it's going to be an entire weekend of people giving me a hard time, so that's really the reason why I don't go to Kansas Fest, I would like to go, but uh... Oh, I'm at the end. He's going to get my shields. He's going to get the shields. I mean, it's all, it's do or die. We got to go. No, oh, no, 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 no. Don't get my shields. He's almost to the rebel base. Oh. Look at that. Did you see the troop transport? Go away. That was cool. Hey, Joey, come back anytime. We're on every uh, Wednesday night. 7 o'clock central and um, of course go to podcast.robohara.com and you can see all the uh, podcasts and stuff and go check out old episodes of Sprite Castle or there's only a few episodes of Like a Doss or You Don't Know Flat there's a lot of episodes of that so come by anytime there's lots of cool uh, uh, retro people we like all kinds of old systems and uh, anyway take care of your family and hopefully we'll see you back around soon Unless an ad at destroys your house. <laughs> and then all bets are off. Oh no. I know there's some controversy. I saw some controversy this year on Kansas Fest in regards to uh, their COVID protocols. But I will be honest with you, I didn't look at it close enough to see what the controversy was. I believe they are following. Uh, normal, uh, I would say normal, I would say they're following uh, Kansas protocol, which we're in the Midwest. I'm in Oklahoma, but uh, uh, COVID protocol around here is uh, if you s this is, well, I would say uh, masking is uh, below uh, suggested. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what, like uh, there are times where I put on a mask and I feel like people are staring at me and not not in a boy I wish I were you way. <laughs> so I think that's what Kansas Fest said was uh, no masks and I believe that, that raised some concern because uh, people are coming from a long ways away and, and in other parts of the country and different places where that that's not necessarily the norm right now. So. But if you got the force... Nothing to worry about. Empire Strikes Back. All right. Uh-oh. It's time to go check in. And see uh, if any other towns have been uh, leveled. Let's go see what's going on over here. Visual, I could tell you where it was, and it was north of I-40. Just because the way of the whole thing was movement, and I could see that cut there. Right now, wait a minute. I live right okay, near so I-40. I don't like hearing that. Radar confirms what we were saying. East of Highway 48. Okay, here's, here's Okima. One, two Oh, that's Okima. That's really far away. Southwest of Okima. 
If you live in Okima, west of Okima, tornado safe spot, lowest level, center part of the house, you got to go now. You have to go now. You cannot wait. Okay, so now, when we're talking about uh, uh, rotation Possibly. and colors and things to like that, let's and trying to occlude and lift a little bit farther north. That's been the trend This is today. bad. <laughs> when it gets off, really dark on the middle, and then in the, when the thing that's, really that's not to good. Produce, so this is uh, turn, measuring the speed the rotation of the wind. You can see the so wind notice how shot. He's, this he's is uh, north the, the green is slow, yeah, he's got a, looks but the red is high. So when you have red inside green right here, that means the red's moving very fast so and the green's the moving tornado. more slowly. Oh, going to be um, right there. Let's go back to uh, debris detector. Let's see what that looks like. Uh oh, okay. now they got a debris debris uh, can't say it. debris detector. Um, it's definitely not uh, debris south of Okina. No, that's what you're no, thinking no, no. at home. But, oh, is that no, the that's, deal, that's Buck? Was that? Uh, okay. Uh, I don't see. Like I said, I, I wasn't sure exactly what the controversy was. Wow. Okay. Uh, I just didn't look into place, it to see what, I just saw what, what it was, was that doing. people were, were upset about. Go back about. to velocity and go to base. Okay. This one more time. Uh, okay, so here's seconds, your wind velocity. Here, now, the other night when we had storms, we had storms okay. on Monday night, and we, we had... I just, um, I just saw that shot. Okay. So it's, it's, it's going it's, to... Hang on. Let's see what this is. There's a tornado. Okay. It's going to miss Okima. Now, if you notice on here, also, here's Bob. Right, and you see Bob the on the map? It's There's a little car here. Sides. You probably can't see that, but it says west Bob. Uh, we're talking about, and, uh, I mean, you're gonna have so this is Okima right, right here, and this is Bob. So over here, here's Okima. So this is Bob. Right so Bob's view is right here. Yeah, that's, yep, that's what he just said. Here's where Bob is right here. So Bob's. has no fear. Bob is sitting in the middle of a tornado. Again, that's the difference between. Oh, dear. Really, really good storm chasing and really crazy. All right, dear. Well, Bob, good luck to you. Okima is uh, far away, so uh, you know what? Uh, I don't think I think they've they've done they've modified this directory. I don't think it showed any. F no, nope. So here we go. It's two hundred and two blocks, uh, which is about. A third of a disc and a full Commodore 64 disc is a little over 170k. So it was a third of 170k. Pretty small uh, as far as oh, that's nice, Mac Apple. I like that little tornado. That's cool. All right, so let's go see. Let's check out another release from this past week. This is another release on the Commodore 64. I believe this is a Arliss soft release. I love Carrington. Carrington Vanson is one of my favorite podcasting uh, people. I, uh, I'm more than loving him as a podcaster. I love him as a dude. I like Carrington. And, um, but I, I definitely think, uh, if you are, you know, I was listening to, um, uh, uh, growing up eighties, which is, um, a couple of guys from Canada and listening to them, like being locked down and things like that. Different parts of, I mean, they're, they're in Canada. Uh, we're in the Southern part of the United States. I'm not saying either way of, uh, of, uh, dealing with, uh, COVID, you know, uh, different places. Oh, wow. This looks really good. Oh, it's, it scrolls. I see to be able to get, uh, the entire thing, which is bad because I don't do good when I can see the whole map at once. Um, but, uh, uh, so the example I would, I would give you is recently when we, a few months ago, went on a road trip to uh, Tennessee. And so that was at a time where we were still, uh, Oklahoma was still requiring masks uh, at certain places like public uh, places. I don't remember. I, I think it was restaurants. You had to wear a mask to go in, uh, but then took your mask off to eat, something like that. Uh, but as we moved further into what I would call the South, you know, the good old South, <laughs> um, just in one road trip, you saw those rules changing. Like, you know, the rules that were here 
a uh, hundred miles away, we're a little bit different and a hundred miles away. We're, we're even more different than that. So I, I would say, um, that, uh, most of Canada, from what I understand is very, very conservative and still is. And so, Oh, Oh, hang on for a second. Uh, roof down. <laughs> now this is Seminole. This is another place. that's really far away from me. I've, I don't think I've ever been to Seminole. Um, but now this is what the news will be all night is, um, uh, the storm chasers will go to all the places where the tornado, like behind the tornado and they will get these shots. So, I mean, there could only be, maybe there's only one building in town, uh, that got hit or something, but, uh, uh, but they, they will all go there. So that's, that's what we've got now. We'll just, this'll be on the front page of the newspaper tomorrow is look, is that Sonic or no, that's a McDonald's right there. And now they've got, uh, this lady, she's like, we were here. We were the first ones to bring it to you live. This roof fell off. <laughs> so, all right, let's get back to good old games here. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know about uh, old Kansas Fest. It'll be interesting to see what happens. All right, one player only. Bonus Pac-Man. By the way, I am terrible at Pac-Man. I don't. Oh, I, I can give myself more lives. Although that just more lives with me and Pac-Man is just like prolonging the just a little bit. Alright. Well, it handles pretty good. Uh, oops. The sound is good. The sound is not arcade accurate, I would say. Oh, I should have been looking ahead. <laughs> All right, let's try this a little. Try a little harder. Oh, I just, I was, <laughs> the problem is I keep looking to the side at. Uh, well, I would say that uh, the graphics look very good. The graphics look very much like I would expect. Uh, an arcade version of Pac-Man uh, to look. Oh boy. Uh, so, I think the graphics are really good. That's my first impression. <laughs> I'm so bad at Pac-Man. I'm so bad at looking... At, oh, saving! Now that's interesting. So it's saving my high score. Um... So we got Blinky, Pinky, Inky, and Clyde. And by the way, because I just had this out, hold on, give me 10 seconds. Ow. Now I got my headphones back on. Oh boy, another roof. Another roof gun. I also have right here something I talked about on a recent Rando Rob, which is, uh, well, my copy of Pac-Man Fever. This is my 45 from when I was a kid. And uh, if you recall, Pac-Man Fever was a single uh, before there was an album. Uh, so they just released a single, and this was it, uh, Pac-Man Fever. And uh, they did not have a second song to go with Pac-Man Fever. And so on the flip side of the single is Pac-Man Fever Instrumental, which is <laughs> the same song with just no vocals. So that's the kind of stuff when you... Uh, Subscribe to the old Patreon and you get your weekly Rando Rob video. Uh, everybody was luckily lucky enough one week to get uh, some some Pac-Man talk. There's Pac-Man mug over here and some other stuff. that have all been featured on Rando Rob. Okay, I just hit the button. That was weird. It didn't reset quite right. So I would say that uh, there's a little bit of, I mean, I 
guess it handles like it should. Oh, that was a power pellet. Gee, Palmer got an autograph version of Pac-Man Fever. Okay, that's cool. Oh. I would, uh, chalk any, uh, things that look like they're control issues just up to my poor Pac-Man skills. As Meatloaf once said, three out of four ain't bad, or something like that. Alright. Oh, look how close I was. <laughs> right there, I was beat a level. Oh, come on now, don't kill me right off the bat. It flashes. Hmm. So this is what I would say. I mean, graphic-wise, obviously, number one, because it's a, a vertical uh, game. Uh, if you want to get it in that resolution, uh, you've, you've got to scroll or, or shrink the screen. Those are your two options. So they've obviously uh, decided to, to scroll things. So uh, it's a design choice. It's not, not terribly annoying. Uh, it, it's not scrolling the whole time. It's just scrolls whenever you cross the uh, median there. Um, the second thing I would say, uh, I mean, I would say the graphics are more authentic than the sound. That sounded fairly authentic. Oh. I would also say that uh, probably with a joystick it would be easier i'm playing with a gamepad uh yeah i don't i'm kind of the same way i don't uh no oh no i went okay that was that was controller controller issue a little bit yeah it's difficult okay so this is this should be intermission so i would say it's really good i would say um uh looks wise i would say it's probably the best looking pac-man game on Commodore 64 i, I don't know Also, you can tell a uh, like me, an amateur player, from a, uh, a good player, uh, because an amateur player, like I, just think of uh, the fruit as being a distraction to kill you. <laughs> so I don't even go for it. Okay, so my high score is one one eight eight zero, which is also the high score there, and so I'm going to reset it, and I want to look at the disc, and uh, sure enough. There is a pack score file right there, a sequential file. So it did save to the disk. Um, I suppose when they do another, if they release this for the, uh, like if you do an easy flash cartridge, I don't know if you could still, in a cartridge image, if you could save high scores or not. Yeah, you're exactly right, Jeff. So I do like that it saves the high score. We can see the high score up there. I wish that uh, you also put your initials in. That part would be nice. Uh, fortunately, uh, Steel Rat, by the way, lives uh, relatively near close to me. Uh, and so um, he is also not near the tornadoes, which uh, now seem to be approaching the town of Dibble. And there's two bad things about Dibble. Uh, if you live there right now, one is that uh, there may be a tornado approaching, and two, you live in a town named Dibble. 
Uh, okay, so when I hit the button that time, it took me to this screen. But last time, uh, when I hit it, it didn't do that. It just kind of had a glitch show up on the top of the map. Another sign of a uh, quote-unquote amateur player, uh, me, is using... Oh, he scared me for a minute. He's, uh, in turn, is uh, using these to buy time uh, to eat dots instead of uh, chasing all the ghosts. Oh, boy. Okay. Oh, no. Well, pack poop. All right. <sighs> Oh man, come on, I had that turn. Um well first of all, tornadoes are pretty common here. <laughs> I mean if it's that time of year, I mean it's literally tornado season right now, so all right, thumb, don't fail me now. Um, but but here's the thing about uh, uh, about tornadoes. Uh, tornadoes don't really move very quickly. I mean, they spin quickly, but as far as you know, as the crow flies, as they say, uh, like it's not like you know, oops, it's not like uh, you know. They're not, they're not chasing you doing 100 miles an hour. It's not, and they're not like, you know, like the killer from Scream or something, right? <laughs> like they don't sneak up behind you. Um, so, oh, geez, that red one right there. Like if you make the wrong turn right off the beginning, the red guy's just like right there. Also, he's not a guy, it's a ghost. Well, this is bad. I just used more. I just ate that. I really wanted to kind of prove my worth to get that strawberry down there. I want to get that strawberry, but everybody knows strawberry, strawberry. Okay, I can't do NWA on this show. Uh-oh. Oh, boy, I thought I was done. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, boy. It turns out I missed some dots. Oh, rats. Um, but, uh, so let's go here and go to Google Maps and type in Yukon, Oklahoma, which we have right here. This is close enough for uh, government work. And then we will choose uh, a destination of Dibble, Oklahoma. I mean, Oklahoma is like, you know, 400 miles wide and 300 miles tall. Uh, now, it does have me walking to Dibble, which would take a long time. <laughs> Let's switch that to driving. Um, but, uh, I mean, you got to go east and then, uh, what is this even by? Oh, okay. So Bridge Bridge Creek, by the way, is where uh, a friend, uh, a uh, a boss of mine and Steel Rats lived in Bridge Creek and got uh, uh, hit by a tornado. And if you listen to the You Don't Know Flack, uh, the uh, uh, our our friend Tom, who worked at Pizza Hut, lived in Bridge Creek. And the scary thing about this was he lived in a mobile home park, and the uh, tornado basically when he heard about it, his mobile home park to leave was a three mile road and the tornado was coming down the road. So there was nowhere to go. It was like trapped and coming towards him that. So that was like a horror movie. Um, yeah. So, uh, uh, Steve's right. You know, in the middle of the night when stuff's going on, if something hits at two in the morning or something, then it's, it's freaky. But, uh, so first of all, Dibble's like really far away from me. I mean, it's almost an hour drive down here, 45, 50 miles. Um, but, uh, but the other thing is, uh, again, if they go back and they show you that line, like, remember it was going this way, it's like, whoop, 
that big thing like that. So if we go back to the map, like I know it's here and it's going here. It's like tornadoes don't just go like, oh, I'll just come over here. Ah, you know, they, they just kind of follow their little straight line wherever it is uh, that the winds are blowing. So, uh, so when, when you hear that it's going to be bad weather, you turn on the news and you, uh, uh, you know, keep one eye on what's going on. And that's what I'm doing tonight. But yeah, it doesn't, uh, 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 you know, it doesn't really freak me out. Oh. See, the problem is when it scrolls and then you immediately, and you go, oh, there was a guy. Well, that was silly. Nope. <laughs> I got cornered. So the other, uh, I would say, difficulty or challenge to this game is that because it scrolls, uh, it is uh, sometimes difficult to see where the uh, uh, pellets are that you missed. Because if they're on the top half of the screen and you're on the bottom half, then when you glance up, you can't see where they are. But the other uh, thing I will say about the uh, weather forecast is um, they, uh, once the machine is spun up, uh, if that makes sense, like now, you know, David Morgan's got his tie on. They've got all the storm chasers out there. Every, it's all going. And so now um, uh, they won't stop. So, I mean, now he's literally on the news and he's like, we're getting some rain. We've got thunder and rain. Well, uh, I mean, I'm not, you know, the thing that I was streaming, that's not, uh, uh, you know, like a special weather channel. That's preemptive program. Like they have taken over the TV. So now, I mean, that's your night. For local local broadcast television, right? So, um, so that's the thing. It's like it's now everything is fired up. So they're they're not gonna quit. Oh, did you see that guy reverse directions? You're not supposed to do that. Uh, if there are patterns in this version, I will never learn them. I will probably can't imagine playing this uh much not because uh not because it's bad but because i'm just not really a bad guy although you wouldn't know it from that little sample of badassery maybe we'll have us a pac-man tournament at boat fest boat fest weekend of June 26th. That's my wife's birthday. If you want more information about BoatFest, go to BoatFest.info. I believe uh, nearly half the tickets are sold. Game over. You know what won't be at Boat Fest Tornadoes? Not going to be a problem in West Virginia. All right. So this is game uh, two of three that uh, we tried tonight. And the uh, third game is a game that I have not played since the 70s, I don't believe. Uh, that was also released this week for the Commodore 64. I have not played this since I played it originally on the Odyssey 2. We had an Odyssey 2 before we had an Atari 2600. This is Munchkin Commodore 64, probably better well known as Casey Munchkin. That's a good graphic. I'm not going to lie. That's not bad. Thank you. 
So three ports released this week for the Commodore 64. You got Casey Munchkin. We have an updated arcade uh, version of Pac-Man. And then, of course, we had The Empire Strikes Back. Original game by Ed Averett. Commodore 64 by Frederick... Or, oh, Frederick. I missed his last name. It's Michael Dunker. Pretzel Logic release. Play original version. Play arcade version. And game settings. Uh, what do we got? Reset save data. Yes or no. That was it. Alright. I'm not an expert. I do like that the font... Looks like the old uh, font. We'll do uh, level zero. Oh, I died already. Well, it goes very fast. Oh, it doesn't. It doesn't uh, keep going. You have to kind of. You have to hold it. So I guess uh, eating those just means I can pass through them. I don't actually eat those guys. Again, a lot of these games are probably easier with a, a joystick versus a, a D-pad. Alright, that wasn't too hard. following the pattern or anything. I'm just uh, watching for the X's. <laughs> I'm going for the X's. If you can't find the X's, all, all my X's live in Texas. That's one great thing about the Commodore 64 is that if you want to play a game without volume, you can turn it down on, <laughs> on your uh, handy dandy monitor. I didn't see an option like uh, sound effects versus music. So I think uh, I think it's the music or nothing. Oops! Oh no no no! There we go. Is there anything else I'm supposed to be doing? Uh, I'm doing this to buy time to see what dot I missed. There it is. not the easiest thing in the world to um, uh, control with a D-pad, but also um, it takes a little bit of like like to go to one side, you can just go like right, 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 right. You, like, you don't have to hold it down necessarily. I'm always in the van market. Someday I will do the show live from a van. That's the dream. I mean, that's my dream. My wife's dream is that I'll move into a van. <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> Just a funny joke. I will say a couple of times, uh, and this is probably just my personal inexperience with the game, but a couple times I've lost, like, where, which one is me or where I am. Well, well I will say that uh, by picking the easiest level, I've proven that uh, the easy level is relatively easy. I assume the harder levels would have uh, more dots and probably less uh, X's to eat. So it, it definitely is a challenge that the dots 
uh, are moving. Oh no. Also, I seem to have 9 million lives. I was going to try on a different, uh, try on a different, uh, do I literally just have unlimited lives? Oh no. I wanted to try a different level. Try the arcade version or something. I mean, maybe I do have unlimited lives or something. I don't know. It just can't seem to uh, run out of mint. All right. Let's start this over. Well, the problem with stealth vans, uh, if you've listened to the uh, episode, is, um, see, now I'm looking because over on the uh, side over here, uh, they've got the timeline up, like where it's going to hit, you know, where it's headed, where the big storms are headed. And as you can see, uh, well, you can't see. It's a little bit off of, uh, uh, but uh, these towns, like this is go this is Golden Pony Casino. I don't know where that is. So really, I just look for things. Now, in uh, right near the exit, uh, the I-40 exit uh, to get into Yukon is the old Xerox plant. And so uh, so then they sometimes they will say, uh, oh, F1 turns music on and off in S3. Okay, here we go. All right, so here's... Uh, all right. Let's try the arcade version here. Oops. Well, I'm trying to mess around. Oh, I see. So the graphics are a little different. Okay, so F1. Oh, okay. So F3 turns it all off, basically. Gotcha. Hmm. Game over. Okay, so in the arcade one. All right. In the arcade version. Um. So my uh, buddy uh, Sean that I did uh, uh, throwback reviews with. Uh. He and I have been talking. Uh, I, I, he's he's now addicted to talking about vans as well, and uh, so, uh oh, uh, and so he does the same thing I do. He's like, man, I saw this van today. <laughs> Taking oh, look at that, level two, harder than level one. I do kind of like the arcade uh, version better. Yeah, I think so. I think you're right. Oops. It's definitely a bit more challenging. The, uh, uh, of course, when I played the the uh, uh, first version, you know, I picked, like, the baby easiest version. All right, let's, uh, I'm trying to use some strategy. Oops, it didn't work. <laughs> Yes, when I download these, I probably should have looked at the instructions, too. Uh, but, uh, yeah, this is a bad... I, I mean, this is not uh, a game that I have uh, uh, a personal... Uh, I mean, the original. I don't, don't have a personal, really, connection to. Uh, we, we only had our... Uh, uh, Odyssey 2 for a year. So, um, oh boy. All right. Let's take this seriously. 
Let's quit messing around, KC. Munchkin, if that is your real name. Oops. Well, it's interesting. Yeah, I, I definitely, uh, I, I'll revisit all these. I would say the, um, uh, uh, Pac-Man is the one that I'll probably play the least. Uh, just because it's Pac-Man, you know? It just automatically starts the game if you let it sit there for just a second. <laughs> Oh, the uh, TV theme episode of Throwback Reviews. Yeah, that was fun. I'm going to reload this. What else is on here? Munchkin. I'm seeing if I could, if there was any other files, that, you know. Yeah, yeah, this is one that uh, I could see coming back to. I need to learn a little bit more about the strategy. Um, that's a good looking opening graphic. I'm not gonna lie. But, um, yeah, so when, when Sean and I, uh, from Throwback, when we talk, he's like, man, I saw this van. He sent me a picture over the weekend. He said, uh, uh, I, w I went down to the lake and I saw this sprinter van. It was parked by the water and I, I knew that guy was sleeping in there. I was like, yeah, they're all over the place. What you, it's, it, you know, it reminds me of the whole van life thing. It reminds me exactly of, uh, learning about geocaching when I first, uh, uh, learned about, yes, that's good strategy. Uh, when I first learned about geocaching and then I started, doing geocaching. In fact, um, Steel Rat and I did a, a little bit. Our families did it uh, when he was in uh, outside of Atlanta. I think we, we came to visit and uh, we did some geocaching um, and we had a geocache in our front yard for a long time. But you find out that it's this whole game that people are playing or a whole thing that people are doing that's right under your nose. Like a lot of people are doing it and I never knew about it, but they're, they're doing it in, in the real world, you know, and, and that's what the van life thing reminds me of is like these vans have always been there. Uh, they've always been around, but, uh, uh, you know, until, until you, you read about or find out that there's this whole van life community going on, uh, you, uh, you just, you know, just overlook it. That's why I keep looking for a, uh, uh, a white, uh, van that looks like a utility or cargo van or something like that. But uh, I've got one, got one on the old radar. Maybe for this weekend, I have to go look at it. My only concern with it is that it's been on the market for uh, several weeks, and a lot of these, the ones that are good prices. Uh, I gotta try this one more time before we go. Exactly. Vuggles. I call them Vuggles. They did such a good job on this. Again, there's your mega style games. Done in the style of the LucasArts logo. That's that's pretty amazing right there. Oh no. Now now they've got storm people in Blanchard, which is kind of close to me. <laughs> it's not that close. Actually, it's all over Shawnee right now, which Jeff knows uh Right over Johnny's house.
Good night, John. May the fourth be with you. Stick your head over here. Got a surprise for you. It's not, you know, it never was the, the world's most uh, advanced game, and I don't think that's the point. I believe uh, the Empire Strikes Back for the Atari 2600 was the very first officially licensed Star Wars game. Got to figure out how to avoid those shots. It's, uh, I mean, it does look good. I, I would love to uh, get far enough in the game, and I'm sure if there's not already, there are probably somebody that's already released uh, cheats for it where you can't get hit or something, and that would be fun to go just to see what uh, some of the other levels look like. I saw a screenshot on Twitter of a night mission where everything was dark. That would be interesting. The only thing that makes this game better is playing it in a van. But once you figure out what the radar... Like, I, I was kind of confused at the radar at first, but basically you're that thing that looks like a, a little sound wave. One shot away. Rebel transport away. Troop transport away. Hooray! It's interesting that during the uh, the the music between the stages, that they went with a non. Uh, Star Wars song, you know what I mean? Like, it could have just been a little refrain, like a doo-doo, like that kind of thing. I would like to see the droid hatch open up. So the thing about this game is that, like, you could beat this if you would stick to the plan. Like, if this is your plan, shoot once and run away. You could beat this game. You could play it forever. But you don't want to do that, because that seems boring. And so then you go, well, can I shoot him twice? All right, I shot him twice and got away with it. Let's go back. Then you go, well, that worked. I could shoot him twice. Although he just shot me in the head. But then you go, well, could I do it three times? Maybe not. And so you just keep pushing your luck. That's that's the thing about this game. Is it's just a game where you get lazy. You die due to laziness. If that's really the theme that uh, I think they were trying to make with Star Wars, it's that you die from laziness. If you get a Wampa, not a Wampa, a Tauntaun, sleep, you're fine. But what if you don't climbing one because you're lazy you die what if you're flying through the uh, Death Star Trench and you don't turn on your uh, 
Not your thing. Darth Vader comes up behind you. Laziness. That's really the point of Star Wars. It's that laziness kills. Laziness. Shot in Empire Strikes Back where he goes, Troop or Rebel Transport made it through, or whatever, like that. And then a guy goes, Hooray! You see him in the background. He just goes, Hooray! Alright, we have not beat level three. See? Laziness. You know what's funny is um, most of my, like, I would say most of my life the cold did not bother me. Uh, I actually wrote a uh, blog post about wearing shorts during the winter and how little it bothered me. And I, uh, I've always worn shorts in the winter and, and uh, never was really into uh, having a big winter coat. I just wear a hoodie and it just didn't bother me. And I've noticed over the past couple of years it's starting to bother me. Uh, I just feel like, uh, like I'm getting cold. Uh, I don't know. I didn't last very long that time. Well, I think they did a great job. Thumbs up to Mega Style uh, for a fantastic release. Uh, and all three of the games I played tonight are available for free. Um, you can go download them, and uh, uh, I'm sure I'll probably. I don't know. I might do a. Uh, I don't know if I can do a whole episode covering this. I suppose I could. Uh, this week's episode of Sprite Castle will be covering Maniac Mansion. And I've already done so much work on it that I hate to uh, push it back another month, so I'll have to go with that, but who knows? This one could, um, could uh, make a resurgence. Who knows? But, uh, yeah, I would say uh, I'm uh, I'm pretty happy with it. It's pretty, uh, well, how, you know, if you're not happy with it, it's free. Who cares? But, uh, uh, yeah, I think, they, I think they did a really good job. The Pac-Man, I thought, looked um, pretty arcade accurate. Of course, you've got that stro scrolling, you know. That's just the that's, uh, nature of the beast. Um, but the sound was off just enough. Um, where, uh, what did I, like the Donkey Kong Jr. port that, uh, that they did sounded just like Donkey Kong Jr. as well as look like Donkey Kong Jr. So, um, you know, I, I, uh, I liked it a little bit better than, um, uh, than this, but, uh, uh, and then the Casey Munchkin, uh, the, uh, first version I played, the console version, the original looked just like, I remember seeing it looking like, um, <clears throat> and uh, the arcade one had a little bit better with some updated graphics and stuff but uh, yeah they're, they're never going to do that they're never going to release uh, Lucas uh, from what I understand and now there's one thing I've learned is that don't never believe anything you read about anything <laughs> like how many times have I read someone say this did not happen and then the next day on the news there's footage and they go oh yeah I guess that I guess that happened um, I, you know, or this, this company is not doing this or that. And then it happens, you know what I mean? So, uh, but you know, according to all, all the stuff that's come out is that there is no, uh, there is no original print, original print of star Wars does not exist. Now it's funny that Lucas films, which of course is now owned by Disney would not own an original print of star Wars when other people ha have it and are able to clean it up and release them and stuff. Um, if they were to do it, I, I've always, like, I own probably, I, 
I own the very original, uh, the first VHS, and when I say first, like the CBS Fox release, the rental release of Star Wars on VHS. Then I have the box set um, that they made that was um, uh, in stereo, but I believe it's a dump from the laser discs. Then I have the THX version. I have the THX widescreen version. I have the uh, special edition. I have the I have the VCDs that are um, where did they come from? Are they Korean? I think maybe they're Korean, but there's an official set of VCDs. So the point is that I've bought the Star Wars trilogy in many, many formats over the years. I had those DVDs. I had the special, or not the special edition, but the ones that were supposed to be the uncut original things, except for they weren't. And then, of course, the special editions and stuff. So I, you know, I probably have 10 legitimate copies of the trilogy in different formats and different releases. So, but I said I'm not doing it anymore. You know, when they re released them, uh, on uh, Blu-ray, I did not buy the Blu-rays. I said I'm not, I'm not buying them anymore. The only thing that I'll do is if they release the original uncut ones, uh, I would buy a copy of those. But until that happens, I'm kind of done buying uh, copies. Um, you know what? I had the little, the little tiny Star Wars one uh, that you could go like that. Yeah, there's so many, so many little, um, <clears throat> so many little tiny little changes and stuff. I think Empire uh, overall is the one that benefited the most from the changes. Uh, both Star Wars and Jedi. I mean, I could talk about this for hours, but, um, you know, the original Star Wars, there's just so many little changes that they've, they've done over the years. And the Han versus Greedo shooting is just one of them. And there's... Um, you know, I think, I mean, I don't know how many versions of that scene are there. Like there's the original where a Han shoots Greedo in cold blood. Then there's the version where Greedo shoots first and Han shoots him. Then there's the one where Greedo shoots and Han moves. They did that. And then there's another version where they've changed the timing where the, the shots are closer together, where they both kind of simultaneous. So, you know, uh, that's what makes it hard. It's kind of like discussing Blade Runner with somebody. Uh, I remember years ago, a guy was like, well, do you think, you know, Deckard was a, a replicant? I go, well, which version of the movie did you watch? I mean, because there's one where they obviously tried to make it where he is. And there's one where they, you know, a different direct. I mean, the director's cut, I believe tries to make Deckard seem like he's a replicant. The one where he leaves with Rachel at the end and goes off. Um, and has the same dream with the unicorn that all the other replicants were having. So, you know, that makes it pretty obvious that in that cut of the film, he's supposed to be a replicant. So you can't say whether Decker is a replicant. You can only say in this cut of the film <laughs> is Decker supposed to be a replicant. Um, because in the uh, the theatrical one, that part, that ending's not on there. And it doesn't make it seem like, you know, I mean, really the, the arc of change is that he... You know, in one film, you could say the arc of change is, I think, I got to think through this, think about it for a minute, but uh, Deckard's arc of change is that because of Rachel and because of uh, Hans Gruber, <laughs> of Batty, he says, um, you know, he sees them as human because at the end of the, at the end of Blade Runner, you, you know, Deckard is a guy, and at the beginning of the movie, he's like, you know, he's not he's not killing him. He, they're they're terminating him. They're exterminating him. You know that they're not human beings. They're just androids that happen to look like human beings. And then at the end of it, you have this uh, the the tears in the rain scene where basically the replicant is more human than Deckard was, right? Because you know he's the one that's like. If I, you know, could have my whole life and have this one human emotion, that that's enough. Like that's worth worth living. You know what I mean? Uh, but on the other hand, uh, and so Deckard is like he's doing the most inhumane thing, right? Which is killing people that aren't really human but that look like humans. And then you've got the inhuman uh, or unhuman, 
replicant who all he wants is to experience human emotions. And once he does that, he says, I can, I can go. So, so that's the, the dichotomy. And so that's his arc is that at the end, Decker sees that, you know, th- he, he gains empathy, but on the other cut, that's not his arc of change on the other cut. His arc of change is, I mean, of course that happens, but now the thing that he abhorred so much that he was, you know, rehired that he came out of retirement to exterminate he is one of those things and so that is the thing where he you know it's a different it's a different character arc so anyway i could talk about plots and character arcs and all that stuff um and talk about star wars so you know going back to the the uh i mean the han versus greedo thing has been done to death you know but there are lots of other little changes that they made and i gotta tell you um the Han versus Greedo thing I always thought was hokey, right? Like, I think it's a hokey change to do. I think it's one of those changes that doesn't... Re- I mean, it does change things if you think about it a lot. Like, you start thinking about it and you go, boy, it took Han from being a guy that would be assertive to defend himself, right? Like, he's a cold-blooded killer. He shoots Greedo before Greedo gets a chance to shoot him, right? Like, he gets the draw and shoots this guy, shoots him under the table. Um, but if Greedo fires first, now he shot a guy in self-defense and you go, well, that's what a lot of people would do. I mean, especially if you're a, a Karelian smuggler. So <laughs> boy, we're getting into deep Star Wars talk on May the 4th. Um, so if you think about it for a long time, you go, wow, it really does change Han Solo's character. But if you don't think about it and you just watch the special edition, you go, oh, now he shoots and you can just kind of skim along and it doesn't change your appreciation of the film, right? Hey, Dyer, what's going on? We are wrapping up things, but we're getting deep into uh, Star Wars uh, comparisons between the originals and the um, special edition. But, so anyway, it, it, it's a change that on, on one level, if you like I said, if you think about it and you and you, uh, uh, you get into it, you go, wow, it kind of changes uh, Han Solo's character. But if you don't and you just watch the movie, then you go, oh, that happens, that doesn't happen, right? But in Return of the Jedi, they ruined the movie. <laughs> I mean, first of all, you've got the um, Cy Snoodles, like she's gone. Uh, you know, her whole song is gone and they replaced it with that stupid CGI thing. That is so terrible. Like that song is just ridiculously stupid. It's just so terrible. Where the old one was like an actual kind of catchy song, like... Like, I was like, man, I wish I could buy this song. I mean, I realize it's in Lepec or whatever the language is, but, um, but you know, it, it was a good song. But when they get to the end and they have, they took out the Yub Yub song of the Ewoks, like, that is the worst change. I couldn't believe that. Like, I couldn't just, uh, when the replicants evade Star Wars, oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, that's something going to be the special, special edition. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, like that, the Yum Yum song, I mean, that is the end of the Star Wars trilogy. You know what I mean? Like, uh, like, like I've seen that movie so many times, like I could sing a stupid song in Ewok, Ewokies or whatever. Yep, yep. You know what I mean? And you knew it. And then when they replaced it with that, and they could have, I would have been okay if they had just added the footage because that was the whole point of what, what Lucas wanted to do was he wanted to tie it into the prequels by showing additional footage. He wanted to show Coruscant. He wanted to show um, all these other uh, different, uh, he wanted to show Naboo, right? Because now when you watch it and you go, oh, these are all these other planets and we're going to go there in other films. So so that's what he's trying to do is, is uh, retcon return of the Jedi and show that it's part of this bigger because it technically in the timeline, it would be after the prequels. And so now you've tied it into the prequels, right. Um, by, by adding that. So it, it's kind of like the whole, the whole, um, there's an issue with all these films. Now they, they kind of explain it, but like the newer, the film is the better the ships look, even though that may not apply in the timeline, right? Like, all the ships in the prequels are all brand new and shiny. Well, that kind of makes sense because 
then the ships, you know, in four, five, and six, these would be like for the rebels. These are all, you know, not all, but some of them are stolen ships, and they're so they're they're older ships, they're worn out things. But then they all look new again in seven, eight, and nine. You know, so oh, oh, don't get me started. Don't get me started on the Star Wars rant. Oh, on May the fourth. Hey, by the way. Wore this to work today. Nobody cared. Not a single person said it. May the fourth be with you or whatever. I think you know, and uh, and not not that I care. It's not like it hurt my feelings or whatever. But um, I just don't think it's on. Uh, I don't think Star Wars is on people's radar anymore. Now, uh, 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 Steel Rat and I, our our buddy Andy, his kids are all into Star Wars, and I absolutely love it. Now, the 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 bad part is. They're into new Star Wars. I wouldn't say that's bad, but they're, they're into, like, uh, I, was, I was telling this story last week, but uh, Andy called me one day. He's like, hey, my kid's got a Star Wars question. I'm like, well, they've called the right guy. What, what's your question? And then they started going off of something about the Inquisitor and this and that and how when Darth Maul came back, and I was like, Darth Maul didn't came, come back. He got chopped in half. You know, this is a few years ago. Like Darth Maul ain't back, and they're like, oh, no, he's got robot legs now. He's... And I was like, what are y'all talking about? You know, and it was like their, uh, their whole thing was like, uh, like they know Star Wars. They know their Star Wars better than I know. Not better than I know my Star Wars. I just don't know their Star Wars. And, and, you know, that's probably the way it's supposed to be. Like, I remember my, my parents, you know, my dad, uh, just laughing and he's like, "Uh Oh, if a guy was on screen for five seconds he's getting an action figure and he's like i bet that guy has a name and i'm like yeah that's that's zuckus of course he has a name why wouldn't he have a name you just doesn't have a lot of stuff on here but later on if you read the comic you know <laughs> and four lom which um of course you know there's the famous thing where uh th those were two of the bounty hunters that were on the um bridge of uh darth vader's ship uh, the executor that when he called all the bounty hunters to go find the Millennium Falcon and, uh, or to, to, uh, yeah. And, uh, so those two figures got mixed up and the uh, action figure. So the action figure that's four LOM, technically the guy who's four LOM is labeled Zuckus and the guy who's labeled Zuckus is four LOM. So they got him switched up, which was interchangeable because he didn't have any lines and nobody knew who they were anyway. So they were just. Um, you know, just given those names, but according to the old legend, and I've never seen this disproven is that four LOM, uh, was, uh, stood for, for the love of money. And it was, uh, a thing that was made by, uh, the Lucasfilm guys, uh, just knowing that that figure would, you know, be something that people would buy and they would make a few, few extra bucks. Cause as kids, we had to have them all. And I did. Uh, I don't have every vintage Star Wars figure, but there's a group called the Final 15, which were the ones that were released like after 1985, and I only have about half of those, so I'm missing about seven or eight. Uh, but I won't I won't pay what they cost, so so we're at a standstill. When people you find figures and they're a hundred dollars, I'm not paying a hundred dollars. I don't even like paying ten dollars. <laughs> You know what? I'll pay $4 because it's May the 4th. Uh, and so May the 4th be with all of you. I uh, hope you guys had a good May the 4th. Hope you had fun streaming, playing some games tonight. Uh, this uh, week we will have the uh, a new episode. We're back on track, so we'll have a new episode of Sprite Castle. And we will be reviewing Maniac Mansion this week. So... Uh, I assume you're subscribed through whatever podcatcher of choice that you use, but if you're not, you can always find the episodes over at podcast.robohara.com. We're back on our four week schedule, which means week one of the month, we will have Sprite Castle. Week two will be, you don't know flack. Week three will be like a DOS, my new show where I play, discuss and review DOS classic DOS games. And the fourth, uh, show of the week is cactus flax where I am, uh, chronologically going through all the arcade cabinets that I owned, uh, 
uh, throughout the years and doing a show for each one. And I think we're about 15 or 16 episodes in. We, I did the show for a few years and I put it on hold and now it's back. Um, because you demanded it and by you, I mean, nobody. (laughs) So anyway, here we are. Happy star Wars day to everybody. Uh, check out the shows and I will catch all you guys online. May the fourth be with you.